Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at a broadcast storm, a layer two switching loop. So what you're gonna see here is two links that are, uh, one is redundant and it's a redundant link that's causing the problem here. So on the switch, just for simplicity, we, we have VLAN one across the switch, um, but a per VLAN spanning tree would apply to multiple VLANs. So you need to be uh, conscious of that when you're coming to unplug them. Uh, but for this case, we're just gonna go with VLAN one. So if we open Wireshark on our ethernet, you will see a ridiculous amount of packets on our network. Absolutely wild. Uh, this is not normal. We should see a few packets every second, uh, especially one device connected. So you see, see all these ARP messages here. So uh, basically uh, 4.102 is asking where 4.1 is, which is its default gateway uh, set in its interface. That's what it's looking for in the ARP message. This message is going into this port and then on a switch, the way it works is the, that message will be sent out of all ports except itself on that VLAN. Unfortunately, there is extra links. So that will then go to here. This will send out that message and it will send to all ports except itself. So it will go to this one. Then this one will send it to all ports except itself. So it'll send out here and here, and then it'll go all ports except itself, all ports except itself, and there's a massive loop in the network. And that's what we're seeing here. Absolutely crazy. So this is a major problem for production networks. It can tank the biggest of corporations. It's really serious stuff. So when this happens in production network, it's something you want to solve fast. So there's two options. If you have good network documentation for the network, particularly uh, attention to VLANs uh, assigned to these ports, access ports, like since if the, these lot are VLAN 5, this is VLAN 6. If you have VLAN 6 and VLAN 6, you have two redundant uh, a link and a redundant link to VLAN 6, you're going to have the same problem. So it's, it's particularly really bad as well if you're having PVSD with lots of different VLANs. So again, you've got to be conscious of that. And when you are unplugging, um, cables, you gotta be really wary of that, especially in a production environment. But since you're in a trouble anyway, you're gonna to have to do it. So what you're gonna do is use the documentation, figure out where the redundant links are and disconnect them. So if you disconnect the link, the problem goes away. And what you've effectively done is what spanning tree does is down redundant links to uh, the same network on the same VLAN. So the network is fixed now and we can go home. But unfortunately, we can't find the redundant link. The problem is gonna start again. How else can we fix it? Well, like before, we need the, the network documentation. We need to understand our switches. Uh, what we can do is spanning tree is pretty foolproof. So if a few of the switches, enough of them are configured with spanning tree properly, we should be able to avoid, avoid this issue. So what we're gonna do here is wait for this problem to spool up again. Should be in a few seconds. Here we go, going absolutely crazy. All these broadcast ARP messages we spoke about before. So what we wanna do is we want to uh, configure spanning tree for VLAN one on just one of the switches. So it's just a simple command. See, this one's really slow on the input. So I have to copy it in. And we should see the problem go away. And what you should see is this port here, 25 is in a blocking state. And that's basically broken a loop and did what we did just before. So if you do show span, we'll see that port 25, which is the orange one, this one, is in the um, is in the blocking state. We'll add this in. Here we go. Do it do because we're in our privilege exec mode. So here we go with this command here. So we've got 11 in the blocking state on this one. This one's participating. And now it's gone back to equilibrium, and this is how it should be. So that's one way to fix it. This is a very really oversimplified way of doing it. If you have multiple VLANs, trunks, eight or two dot one Q trunks, you need to figure out what the redundant links are, and that's the priority. If you know beforehand, that's great, and that's why you keep good documentation. You might not be able to configure the switches because if you see how slow this one is, but well, obviously it's it's working now. 
Um, but if you see how slow it was before when we we're having this problem, um, that's just much worse with the uh, more devices. So you saw that our computer was generating a hell of a lot of traffic and it was going around like a particle accelerator. Well, if you've got loads of devices on your network, you can just see how big of an impact this can make. And oftentimes the, the switches just aren't able to configure. You're not, not able to configure them. They just, they just die. So yeah, keep the documentation for your switches. Um, maybe think about this and think about having to do this one day uh, so that when it does happen, you're prepared uh, and you can unplug those, um, those links because sometimes if you can't access the switches, you have to go there and unplug a lot of cables. Um, hopefully, obviously the network's down anyway, so uh, as long as you're as careful as you can be, uh, you could get out of the disaster. Anyways, I hope you like this video. Uh, leave a comment if you like and you want to add anything. Um, this is just a quick video. I haven't gone into much depth in this one. Um, and this is on per VLAN spanning tree in particular, although uh, in this case, we're using VLAN 1, which is a native VLAN, which will uh, apply to the standard um, uh, spanning tree as well. Okie doke. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye now.